Do you ever worry that you're actually living inside of the matrix? That humanity is nothing more than a simulation controlled by a hyper-complex computer algorithm? Do you lose sleep at night wondering if Skynet is real? Wondering if one day we'll all just be controlled by robots? Or perhaps you fear that resistance is futile, and that sometime in the not-so-distant future, we will all become the Borg. <laughs> People tend to be both naturally excited about and fearful of technology, and for good reason. Technology offers us worlds of imagination, innovation, and oftentimes relief from the tedium that is survival. It also comes with it some very real concerns about personal security and new questions of morality. When I was young, I entered a contest on the Nickelodeon television network for kids. You called a phone number and had your name entered into a drawing to win a virtual Mortal Kombat fighting experience. The experience offered the opportunity to stand on a small sensing pad and have your motion tracked as you fought against a virtually controlled AI opponent. This was 25 years ago. We were just getting the original Nintendo, think Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt, into the mainstream. And yet, the media was getting us all excited about this virtual fighting thing. Now, don't get me wrong. Computers are really good at a lot of cool stuff. Pathfinding is a great example of this. Or in other words, how to calculate the most efficient route from point A to point B. If this reminds you of GPS, you'd be correct. GPS is a reasonably good example of modern-day technology done well, assuming that the driver is somewhat conscious and that the map data is up to date. I had to include the first caveat because I remember an old episode of The Office where office manager Michael Scott drives his car into a lake because the GPS lady told him to do it. <laughs> Common sense goes a long ways. Computers are really good at doing repetitive things very quickly. Computer brains, after all, are nothing more than complex sequences of ones and zeros, or binary, in the computer science world. Because of this fact, it's interesting to note that the most common operation or most common thing to do in all of computer programming is simply adding one to a number. Easy, right? These days, computers are really good at serving up fake news. Russian bot farms can simulate clicks and fake traffic. Clever code and crafty design can lead you to believe you're logging into something that looks like Amazon.com, but is actually a rather impressive imposter. The technology companies can seem to be benign and pledge to do no evil, but a simple search for Hillary's emails or Trump's emails will show us what the autocomplete algorithms think of these political figures. Algorithm is a word that's thrown around a lot these days, but in its most basic definition, an algorithm is nothing more than a series of steps used to complete a task or solve a problem. An algorithm could be as simple as washing your hair in the morning, to as complex as the GPS pathfinding we just talked about. It's really, really important to remember, though, that algorithms are not magical. There's nothing supernatural about them. In technology, algorithms are just computer programs. And these programs are written by humans, and humans can have bias. And either consciously or subconsciously, this bias can work its way into the code that we write. Computers are dumb, after all. They're inanimate pieces of hardware and require human brains to bring them to life. Truth be told, technology can fail us in some of the most basic day-to-day -day tasks. If I said right now, for example, hey, S-I-R-I, -I, many of the phones in your pockets would spring to life and await my next command. <laughs> most modern-day digital assistants are not clever enough to accurately distinguish between two voices that sound similar, and who hasn't had the situation where you've just made a purchase on a website like Amazon, only to have that exact same product be advertised to you on a social media website like Facebook or Twitter. If I could get a little bit more technical, in the world of computer science, there's a category of problems that have been proven to be difficult for computers to solve. By proven to be difficult, I mean that it will take a computer a long time to solve the problem, and in fact, may never actually solve it. One such example of this type of problem is called the traveling salesman problem. It's a situation where you have a salesman that needs to visit, to very, uh, visit various cities connected by roads of various lengths. The goal is to have the salesman visit each of the cities and return back to the starting city in the most efficient manner possible. This is also very similar, but not exactly the same as 
the GPS pathfinding example. The only known solution to this problem involves an algorithm that scales exponentially over time. Here's an example of what it looks like to grow exponentially. You'll notice how quickly the graph grows vertically, or the time it takes to solve the problem, compared to how slowly it grows horizontally, or based on the size of the input, or how many cities the salesman needs to travel to. In computer science, this type of problem has a rather fancy name. It's called an NP-hard, or non-deterministic polynomially hard problem, if you'd like to impress your friends. <laughs> While the previous examples are frustrating, they're generally not life-threatening. Sure, losing your entire TEDx talk outline due to a failed hard drive is really frustrating, but it won't kill you. <laughs> what has me and many others concerned is when real-world, physical, tangible danger becomes involved. What I'm getting at here is the constant, incessant push for self-driving cars. Not only is this a challenge technologically, but programming morality also becomes a factor. Imagine the following scenario where you have a self-driving car that finds itself in a situation where it has to collide with one of two people. Which person should the car decide it's going to collide with and ultimately end the life of? Should it automatically select the person who looks older because that person is closer to death anyway? Morbid, I know. <laughs> what if race or gender becomes a factor because of the latent implicit racism or bigotry that a programmer might have? All of these questions get into larger, more philosophical implications that we haven't even really figured out yet as humans, let alone try to tell a computer program what to do. To put all this into perspective, here's a small sample of code. I don't expect you to understand it. It is 15 or so lines of real-world code. You could type that into a computer and have it produce some output. It's used to sort a small list of numbers, either ascending or descending. In computer science, it has a not very fancy name. It's called bubble sort. It is actually a really horrible way to sort a large amount of data quickly. This code makes several assumptions of the programmer writing it. It assumes that the programmer has no spelling errors. It assumes that he or she has formatted and structured the code properly, has made no syntactical errors, and knows how to swap the value of two numbers. And perhaps most importantly, it assumes that the input to this program is five integers, five positive or negative whole numbers, not four numbers, not six, not decimals, fractions, letters, words, or symbols, five integers. Oddly specific, yes. One error in logic will render this code to be completely useless. One typo will bring this program crashing down, and all it does is sort numbers. Use your imaginations to think about how much more infinitely complex something like a self-driving car is. To the person who's worried that AI will one day take over the world and leave us all without jobs, relax. <laughs> We're a long way off from that reality, and I would argue that we'll never actually get there, despite what the media may have you believe. To the person who wants to use computers and technology and push this stuff to its absolute limit to solve real-world problems, Relax. We can and are doing this. And we'll continue to use computers and technology to do what it's good at doing and backing off where it's not. In closing, my friends, I'd leave you with the following thought. Don't fear the machine. Fear us as humans. Thank you.